a product template or a node template, modifying a, a views theming uh, or a views template or something like that, um, or just you know adding CSS to your theme in the normal way with sensible overrides and and uh, I, I guess I'm I'm a reformed module developer when it comes to how I how I make the, the lives of themers difficult. Uh, so. The, the Ubercart checkout form, for example, is notoriously difficult to theme and to customize. Uh, but now, it, it, you know, we're actually using the forms API properly, so you can just theme the form. You can uh, you can alter the form, which you couldn't do in Ubercart. So um, those sorts of things being close to core, but then also depending on these these major contributed modules has really changed the way that we're developing Drupal Commerce. So uh, if you want to find the latest code. Uh, the Commerce project on Drupal.org will always have, I guess, a stable sort of development snapshot. Uh, but the latest code is in my GitHub, uh, where I do all of my development, and then I'll, I'll push it to GitHub. And then whenever it's, it's sort of like a, a, a complete feature, or at least something that's not broken, I'll be exported to CVS. So there's actually a, a primary uh, a primary project on GitHub that's just GitHub.com slash Drupal Commerce slash Drupal Commerce. Uh, that's sort of the staging for exporting to CVS, and then my personal fork of the Drupal Commerce project, which is github.com slash rzarama slash Drupal Commerce, has, I guess, the latest development, and if you're contributing patches or contributing, I guess, uh, pull requests, then they'll come through my, my project on GitHub, and then go to drupal.org. Uh, additionally, there is no installation profile on drupal.org yet, uh, but there is one on GitHub that you can use. Uh, so if you're, if you're a developer and you're wanting to test drive the code, I recommend going to github.com slash rzarama slash commerce dev. And uh, this is my development installation profile that installs and configures all of the Drupal Commerce modules and adds some dummy product data and does some other finagling to the site to uh, disable the overlay in the toolbar and use admin menu, uh, among other things. <coughs> so just so you know that that's there, if you have any questions about this, come find me after the session. Or, I actually managed to roll in Alpha 1 last night, and uh, there are links on the Alpha 1 release notes for, for Drupal Commerce 2, both the installation profile and also the demonstration site that I'm about to run through. Uh, but installing uh, the Commerce Dev profile, you would just download it to your site's profiles directory. You're going to have to make a Commerce Dev directory, and uh, then you'll have the, the Drupal Commerce Dev option during installation, and uh, I don't know if we should to try this because I'd hate for it to blow up on me when I do the live demo. Um, but it, it should uh, just install everything just fine and uh, upon installation have a dummy product data, a shopping cart block, and I should be logged in with an admin menu, able to browse to the different uh, user interfaces. We'll give it just a second to finish working. Five seconds. Uh, it uses the standard Drupal 7 installation profile, <coughs> and then also installs views, rules, entity, address field, admin menu, and then also Drupal Commerce itself. Um, <coughs> oh, and also I don't like the way that Bartik looks out of the box right now, so I use Garland still, um, but don't let that put you off of trying out Drupal Commerce if you really like Vartic. I'm sure it will work on Vartic too. So this is just what the installation profile looks like when you come up. Uh, there are no images on these products, but it's possible to add images to them and fiddle around with those things uh, by going to your store, editing your products, finding the right one, and modifying, and you know, playing around with it as you see fit. But I'm not going to use uh, this fresh install unless the internet fails me, uh, because we do have a demonstration site <coughs> online. Uh, that I would recommend to you. Uh, the URL, if you need to copy it, is uh, demo.commerceguys.com slash dc. <coughs> and uh, this is just a, a quickie, uh, I guess, demo swag store that I set up. Um, somebody in the office made all these like <coughs> fake little Commerce Guys products. So you can't actually buy a, a, a Commerce Guys pin. I know you were all excited about that, but uh, uh, it's all just dummy products in here. And we'll try to get to demo actually on DrupalCommerce.org eventually too. Uh, but this one we'll be using at our, our, I guess, our sponsor table. If anybody wants to come by and, and play with the administrative interface instead of just running through the checkout process, 
uh, feel free to stop by the booth and, and get your hands dirty in the back end. <coughs> so, uh, I've already talked about most of, I guess, the features currently implemented. Uh, we have the products, the orders, line items, all have been implemented as Drupal 7 entities. Uh, there are relationships between some of these things uh, using reference fields. Is everybody familiar with the node reference field on Drupal 6 with CCK? Mm -hmm. Is that pretty common? Yeah? You can reference one node from another node and then display that node in the context of the referencing node. Is that too many, too many references and nodes for 9 a.m.? <laughs> Maybe. <coughs> well, the way that products work on Drupal Commerce is that you actually define a product uh, on its own, standalone, with no way to actually look at it. Uh, so I'll begin there with products in my demo, uh, showing how you define product types, create products, and then what they look like on the front end. So there's a single store menu item uh, with the products uh, navigation item where you can view, uh, first of all, a, a view, actually, of all the products that are already defined on your website. Notice you can edit this view and change the columns, reorder things if you need to. Uh, but the, the basic gist of a product is that it must include a SKU, uh, which if that doesn't translate into uh, the way that you do business here in Europe, uh, it's just a unique product identifier that the merchant defines. I've been told that that doesn't really translate well. Um, but you have to have a unique SKU for every product on your website. Uh, if you remember an Uber cart, you could have one SKU and then add attributes to it, so that one product node functions as multiple products, uh, like different sizes of t-shirts or colors of hats or something. Uh, in Ubercart, you would actually have to define upfront all of your different products, including all of the product variations. Uh, so a product must have a unique SKU for every variation that you're selling, and it also must have a price, um, at least a base price. You can attach additional price fields to the product as you need them. I'll show that in the UI in just a second. Uh, and then every product has a type. Out of the box, Drupal Commerce just makes this generic product type, um, which just has the basic product information with no extra fields attached to it. However, if I wanted to um, have, uh, I guess, an Ubercart style attribute, like a size for all my t-shirts, I would then create a new t-shirt product type, and on this product type, I would add a size field. Uh, so I think we actually had a, a pretty frequent uh, feature request in Ubercart to use CCK for attributes and options. Well, now that's actually what we're doing in Drupal Commerce. All I had to do was add you know, my size field, put my different options in the select list, and, uh, and now whenever I go to create a t-shirt product type, I specify the size for that t-shirt and a unique SKU for that t-shirt, and then I'm actually going to join all these different products together at a point of display. Um, so <coughs> you'll notice this is a little more work. Um, in Ubercart, you can define your attributes and then go make a product and add as many attributes to that product as you wanted to. In Drupal Commerce, you actually have to define a product type, add the fields to it that you need that will function as your attributes, and then go and list out each individual uh, combination of attributes that you want to sell. Uh, so you can imagine if you have more than one attribute on a product, that you're going to have to start listing out like 15 products for every single product you're selling. Uh, that would be a royal pain and not something I would wish on anybody. So Google helpfully paid for a summer of code project uh, called the Bulk Product Creation Module.